All right, for our second topic today, we saw recently saw a couple of articles talking about uh, OnlyFans releasing, you know, it's kind of this financial data and how how popular, uh, how much money it makes, and how profitable it is really stood out. And now OnlyFans is kind of like a creator driven, yeah, you know, like individual creator driven uh, portal where people can subscribe to creators. Essentially, is how I would describe it. And what it has been used for a lot, and what people basically say, it, it's it's used a lot for porn. You know, and then where, you know, like a porn star or someone, anyone can put up there and then put risque or, you know, porn content on and people can subscribe to them and then get receive this stuff or be able to send messages to them and stuff like that. So it I I, I guess there's been an an expression of surprise, maybe not that it's successful altogether, but how successful it is, because at this point, it's it's much more successful than the the websites, at least from a money money driving standpoint, websites that do porn. Completely, you know, so it, it's it's really been to 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 men to some, it's been surprising how well it's done. So you tell me, you know, Tunde, do you think it's surprising that OnlyFans has you know not just been able to work, but to be such a heavily you know like like to, or such a hugely successful business venture, and also in such a short period of time? Um, I'd say yes and no. I mean, you're you're allusion to you know sex selling and porn and all that makes me is a is a no part. I'm not surprised that um, a site like this. Uh, will have done so well, but but yeah, the surprising thing is you know why. I guess the surprising thing is that the business model they employ um, has been so successful, and I, I'm not saying I'm surprised because I didn't think it could be. It just this is something novel and new, and I never thought you know about this kind of model before. And so well, it's a model though that's a tried and true model for the internet though, as far as YouTube. I mean, users upload content. For other people to be able to consume and then yeah. subscription models and stuff. So it's 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 a context and, you know, with a feature set that's kind of that they were the ones that pioneered all together. No, that's what I mean. It's context. just to use it because because I guess the, you know, the traditional porn industry is, I guess, more like the movie studio industry. Whereas yeah. some yeah, yeah, actors, yeah. they go do a scene. You're paying, a, you know, someone's producing it. They got the cameras, all that. And then and then you're paying that studio or that production house for their content. You put it on your site. And you're either giving it away for free to, and selling ads, or you're, you're giving subscriptions and blah blah blah. Yeah. This one is really where the the content creators are empowered um, because they're basically the, con- the, the entrepreneurs. Actor basically, is the content creator. And yeah, we'll they're just the entrepreneur, go, goes, and they're the, the the film crew, or you know, they, yeah. they have people that. But they're the the whole they 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 create in the content. It's not a, a studio. It's not, you know, a director necessarily, or it doesn't have to be at least. Like, it's yeah. it's a really a more direct I mean, thing. I guess, so, yeah. yeah, like the way you say it is it's no different than the way that um, the independent media space has began to thrive in recent years on platforms like YouTube, um, where you have these, these... I got an even better example for you. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> if Substack, if, I mean, to me, it's one of those things that it, like, I'm, I don't pay attention to this world that much. So it's a surprise to me only because I'm not following it as closely. But I, if Substack can be successful with content creators writing stuff <laughs> for people to read, and then you pay a subscription for that person, and then you get their, their, they, their article is emailed to you, and, and that is instead of like a, a traditional newspaper, for example, you know, where yeah. the, the newspaper pays the writer and then puts the stuff on their website and then you can have a subscription. That'd be kind of the the subscript the, the, the studio analogy for like, you know, your your traditional kind of setup. But if Substack can do it for words, then I imagine it's obvious that only fans can do it for video, and particularly video or images that, you know, <laughs> are risque, yeah. so to speak. So to me, it's one of those things that in hindsight seems very obvious. And But I also think it taps into something else and that the direct or the feeling of a direct connection in a, in a world and a society that we're in right now where people feel less connected than ever and then people are lonelier than ever. And so what stood out to me in this also was that people can pay money to be like, I guess, at a subscription level or maybe a la carte, I don't know, 100%, but you can pay money to be able to send direct messages to somebody as well, like the content creator. So they're uploading pictures and videos and you're getting all that. And then if you're a certain tier or whatever, you can send a direct message and they'll respond to you and so forth. So there's even a more kind of personal connection that is involved in that. And what it reminds me of in that kind of sense is that 
like for podcasts or, you know, things like that, a lot of times people, if you listen to a podcast, uh, a a podcaster a lot, people will feel like they have kind of a personal connection with that person, even though that's really a one way thing. So this is kind of like that where you can get a personal connection with someone who you may be sexually attracted to and so forth and not just consuming a video, you know, by yourself in the room or something like that. So it, it, it really taps into, I think, a lot of different things, which to me explains why you can you can see why it would be more profitable and successful than even the porn business itself, because it adds more facets to it. And it really leverages the way a lot of business is done these days. Yeah, I think it's um, I want to tap on the loneliness thing, but just to f- piggyback on where you just ended, which was on the um, financial part, I found it interesting. One of the articles says last year, the company posted a 50 percent five zero uh, operating margin. Meta, <laughs> Which is nuts. I know Meta had thirty five percent operating margin and Google twenty seven percent. So, which is what I realized just is for reference. So hold on, hold on. Yeah. The Meta and the Google numbers are nuts as well. Like those, no, I know, are, but you know, those are great numbers but, as far as how much your profit you're pulling in versus your revenue. But yeah, our OnlyFans laps that. Yeah, and, and that's why I find it interesting because I mean Meta and and Google, even though they have less brick and mortar costs than let's say a Coca Cola or a McDonald's. Um, they 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 still plow money back into research and development because they're trying to you know save the world with generative AI. They have their products, they have their services, they, you know all that. You know OnlyFans is a great example. They don't. I mean, they can invest in making themselves uh, you know look better with up- updating the website and some marketing stuff, but they don't really. There's no research and development. They're not creating something new like like a new product or or technology. So that's why they're able to have such a huge huge margin as well, which I just find interesting is that they're just providing a platform for people to be, be humans on, right? Like to the sex and all that. And that's where it seems, yeah, it seems like the content moderation piece is going to, it would be their biggest kind of, that's their biggest risk. And what I mean by that is the, like making sure everybody's of age, making sure everybody who's doing this stuff is not being compelled to do it. Like, it seems like that kind of stuff would end up being their biggest vulnerability and their biggest cost. Yeah, uh, well, you know, which like to me they, is probably they, not a. As they make more revenue, those costs are probably relatively fixed. I mean, you know, just having maybe, certain, <laughs> maybe yeah. I don't know. Like that's that's. I mean, I don't know, but that's. It seems like that's going to be their biggest concern, you know. Whereas, and Facebook has those kind of concerns too, from a standpoint of of you know what kind of moderation they're doing or if they're not going to do it at all anymore or whatever. But they have so those kind of costs though, and those kind of costs I think actually aren't fixed. You know, like the fixed yeah. costs can be more of the technical stuff. But, you know, like the, the the servers and so forth, like you don't even have to own, own servers. You can use Amazon servers and, you know, like do a lot of the stuff. But e- no matter what, even if they want to do their own stuff, that kind of stuff is more fixed. But the the ability to manage the content, because content providers have some level of obligation, as we've seen the way the law has evolved. But and in this case, you're dealing with it's not just the content moderation requirements from a free speech standpoint, but from actually are people committing crimes here involving exploitation of minors or exploitation of people, you know, and, and, and so forth. So I think they do have concerns in that standpoint and they are going to have to, like if they're doing 50% profit margin and they're not looking at any of that stuff, then they're going to have some problems pretty soon. Like they hopefully that yeah. money, well, no, I mean, that, the that articles, 50% that's not going to profit, a lot of it's going into that kind of stuff. Yeah. The articles I read, you know, they seem to be aware that that's an important thing to, for them to monitor and all that. But what I, I want to get back to this thing you mentioned about loneliness, because one of the things I, I, I mentioned just now was that the platform is, 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 a, is a place that allows humans to be humans. And what I meant by that in my head jokingly was the idea that sex sells. But when you use the term loneliness, it actually made me realize there's a deeper point to that thing about humans being humans because loneliness is something serious and it's just, yeah. we have a, a loneliness epidemic. I mean, and there's a reason why, you know, the national, you know, whatever about things like torture and all that say that solitary confinement is a form of torture. I mean, humans are social creatures. To your point, though, just real quick, you say let humans be humans. Well, humans desire and strive for connection, you know? So the fact that you can exchange messages with somebody who you admire or whatever and, you know, so forth, it would be something that would, I'm not even saying prey on loneliness, but it can be an answer in a society. I mean, yeah, I mean, look, there are people that do prey on it, but the reality is that um, it's a need for humans to not be lonely. And in a world that's driven by business, someone's going to find a business opportunity to fill that need. And so the, the interesting thing is, though, that I never thought about until this conversation, that OnlyFans could actually be a bridge over the long arc of human kind of, you know, stuff. 
if we if we were to fast forward a hundred years from now and people having like relationships with AI, like for real, like the movie Her, like we've referenced in other shows, where a human being actually gets attracted to and falls in love with a computer program, I could yeah. see this being a bridge because here's what I could see happening. <clears throat> Excuse me, <laughs> a human a human being. Right. Let's say one of these act, you know, the content creator on on OnlyFans, they're only one person. They got 24 hours in the day like the rest of us. What if they have 50,000 followers who are saying, I want to DM you direct message and have this kind of relationship that could be profitable right now? One person can't handle that, you know, 50,000 interactions at any given time. But think about it when bots and AI, the generative AI really becomes really what you could see probably in the next decade. You could have one person with all these little bots under them that are answering all these messages. And if the AI is that I, good. I've read about know? this already. I've, th- there are people who are yeah. trying to do this right now. No, I, with, that's what I'm saying. Like, like, they're going to be successful. That technology is Well, coming. eventually, yeah, eventually we'll get there. <laughs> like right now, I've seen, I've read about this maybe a few months ago where there are performers, I think, I think only fans people that are trying to train AI bots. To be able to do that for them, to yeah. be able to, to 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 expand how many people they can connect with and lower the cost because if a bot is doing it and so forth and so, but but when you said it, I laughed initially because you know how like Uber, you know, was was created and you know they're using driver human drivers and so forth and it's like oh yeah, but their grand plan actually would be to have this all have set up this framework and then be able to plug in automated drivers, automated cars yeah. to go around and do all that. I would, when you said that, hey, you know, like in the future, like basically you're saying OnlyFans is going to try to pull an Uber eventually and have AI uh, uh, sexual attract people attracted to set AI bots, either images or video or whatever. And then they don't even need creators anymore. The creators are going to yeah. get pushed out of it. Well, think about what you the talked same about way earlier. The drivers though. are eventually going to get pushed out of Uber, which no, but that just think I mean, about that's, what that's, you talked about earlier. It's like we did a show probably two years ago about Levi's was the first company to remember to do AI models, models, and there was a yeah. huge uproar in the in the modeling community about it. But one of the things was the this took out their liability of things like HR issues, right? And Me Too moments in the, in the, at the workplace. And it allowed think, them to show more body types, more skin complexions, more like they were able to, they could show anything to anyone, you know? Like, so it, it, it actually, there was some utility to it, you know? Like there was concern. Yeah, but, but there that's was going back to what you brought up earlier about the risks of a, of a company like, um, like the legal and serious risks of them, you know, not realizing that maybe there's human trafficking on their platform or underage yeah. stuff going on. Well, if once you get AI perfected, yeah. yeah, once you get AI perfected, that's out the door because then you're not, you don't have humans yeah. as as the um, as the uh, content creator, and and there's so I could see, and that's what I'm saying is that it's um, I uh, I never thought of this before this conversation, but OnlyFans actually I could still be can't a very believe this conversation got here. Like I still can't believe that we got to the point where we're talking about OnlyFans eventually trying to transition out the human content creators. No, that's what I'm bots. saying. It's fascinating <laughs> that um yeah that we're not just joking about porn and sex. That's that's I'm, I'm surprised <laughs> that we're that mature actually. That's that's impressive. Now I got to show this one to my wife and say, see, I can talk about something without bringing up sex all the time. Uh, <laughs> I can talk but, about porn without bringing up sex yeah, without, all the time. without bringing up sex. That's interesting. How did <laughs> how do we do that? Um, but but no but. But it's one of the like, here's the thing. You blew my mind in a conversation we had some time ago this year, but about something. Thank you, we were sir. talking about the first. Yeah, no, you're welcome. You were, <laughs> you were talking about the First Amendment because it, what you said was very true. And I never thought of it this way that we have to thank, seriously, all these people that are constitutional, you know, like they, they're so hard at beating it down the door about how they, they love the Constitution. They should be thanking NWA. Yeah. And two live crew from the late 80s to early 90s for, you know, all the pressure they had from the system and their court cases actually are why we enjoy like a lot of the freedoms, freedom of speech on Twitter and the Internet now is because of a lot of the court cases from two live crew in the early Where 90s. They stood up to the government, basically. Yeah. You know, like, and, 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 and said, you know, like and and a lot of them people don't put those. Court. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of people don't put those two and two together. And I think that's what I'm saying. Like maybe in 50 years. The whole thing of the way humans relate to AI and all that, I'm not trying to make a nasty joke about it. I'm just being serious that the generative AI might be that good that we become friends with with our robots, just like we're friends with our dogs. Like, I have a chocolate lab. That's my buddy. And imagine if there was a computer program that could even talk to me 
more than my dog. You know, my dog obviously can't talk. So, so my point is, is that it's, it's fascinating that, yeah, maybe this, maybe this company that we all look at as just some kind of advanced porn site where people, you know, it's, it's like a brokerage services for adults, uh, actually will change humanity. That, that could be interesting. So, well, I mean, that many people have said, honestly, like I've heard this in reference that porn is what really saved the internet and really, you know, like builds it up at a time before, like before it was everywhere. Like that's what people, that's one of the first things that people did there, you know, was and, and so forth. And so it wouldn't be the craziest thing to say that some like, something like this would bring it, usher in changes in terms of the way that humans, uh, satisfy the needs for loneliness. I'm not saying this would be a good thing, though. Like, this is, you know, frightening to me, like, the, where this conversation went, um, you know, just from the standpoint. Of, <laughs> but, I mean, it, 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 I'm glad, it is I'm glad it was frightening, kind of- and I, I didn't have to involve S&M in the conversation, so that's, you know, <laughs> that makes me feel good. So, but yeah, I mean, it, it's, it is definitely not something that's inconceivable that the direction that a company like this goes with you know, utilizing modern technology and further leveraging modern technology could, you know, have major implications and effects on how we all interact with each other in the future. So, I mean, yeah, it's an interesting, it it wasn't where I thought we would go with the conversation, but I definitely think it's a lot of insight there. Uh, So good though. It was a good place to land. (laughs) No, for sure. For sure. So I I definitely think I can tell my wife something new. (laughs) <laughs> but but I, let, let, let's, I want to wrap this show up from here. Uh, we appreciate yeah. our opportunity on this episode of Call Like I See It. Subscribe to the podcast, rate it, review it, tell us what you think, send it to a friend. Till next time, I'm James Keys. I'm Tunde Winlana. All right, we'll talk to you next time.